The Carrick Institute, with support from the Asian Development Bank, has developed a series of road safety engineering manuals and technical workshops as a major commitment to improving road safety across Central Asia. The manuals and workshops follow the safe system approach to road safety, which aims for a road network that is better able to accommodate human errors and to forgive them. This series of short films aims to promote the Carrack Road Safety Engineering Manuals, encourage you to join a Carrack workshop in person or online, and to offer a sample of what you will learn from the manuals and the workshops. This is the fourth film in the series, and it covers pedestrian safety. Thank you for viewing this short film, and welcome. It's great to have you with us. Pedestrians are the largest group of road users, and they are also overly involved in fatal crashes in most Carrick countries. The Carrick Manual focuses on infrastructure that can help pedestrians. It includes the high-risk groups of pedestrians, practical pedestrian facilities, small-scale civil works that help pedestrians, and traffic calming for villages and local streets. Every pedestrian is important and all deserve our attention when it comes to their safety. But there are four groups of pedestrians who need our assistance more than others. They are children between the ages of 4 and 12, they are impulsive and they lack the judgement to select safe gaps in traffic. Senior citizens over the age of 65, seniors are slower with their judgement and they suffer more serious injuries when struck. Intoxicated pedestrians. These people are unpredictable. They take more risks and they have lost the ability to select safe gaps in traffic. Disabled pedestrians. The disabled need our help with their mobility. The good news is that we can benefit all pedestrians through the facilities and civil works that are detailed in the Carrick Manual. We have a number of useful devices to help pedestrians to cross busy roads. Our challenge is to decide which one will serve our customers best. Let's look at some of these. Firstly, there are time separation devices. These give pedestrians their own short period of time to cross the road. They may be active crossings, where traffic signals control the drivers, or passive crossings, which require the pedestrian on the crossing to be seen by the approaching driver and for the driver to then give way. Active crossings include intersection signals, pedestrian signals with or without pedestrian push buttons, and puff and crossing. The Carrack Manual offers advice on how to improve your existing active crossings to maximise pedestrian safety. Three issues in particular need attention. Fit push buttons to your pedestrian signals so the pedestrians can call up their phase and not wait for the fixed cycle time. Provide consistent clearance times at all your pedestrian signals. Use pedestrian user-friendly intelligent crossings, commonly called puffin crossings. They are very effective. They look the same as pedestrian operated signals, but they have a small overhead detector to detect slow moving pedestrians who may be stranded on the crossing. If detected, they instruct the controller to increase the clearance time. Puffins have a proven 26% crash reduction factor for pedestrian crashes, and they help the very slow pedestrian, and they reduce average delays to motorists by a remarkable 40%. I really look forward to seeing some puffin crossings on Carrick roads in the near future. The one passive crossing is the widely used zebra crossing. It is a simple and low cost crossing that is intended to give priority to the pedestrian over the motor vehicle. It relies on drivers seeing pedestrians on the crossing in time to give way. But too often drivers do not respect the road rules at zebra crossings. Police have been active in their enforcement of these crossings in recent years and that is making a positive difference. 
but I urge you to never install zebra crossings on high speed roads above 60 kilometres per hour or on multi-lane roads with more than one lane per direction as a stop vehicle in one lane can conceal a fast moving vehicle in the next. Instead of using a zebra crossing at these locations, think about an active form of crossing, maybe pedestrian operated signals or a puffin. Then there are spatial separation devices. These give pedestrians their own space on the road. They include overpasses and underpasses, pedestrian refuges, curb extensions, curb ramps and footpaths. Overpasses and underpasses. Many of these are not well used because most pedestrians do not want to walk further than they need. US research shows that 95% of pedestrians will use an overpass or underpass if there is no increase in travel time. But almost none will use them if it means an additional 50% or more travel time. And many people dislike underpasses. They see them as dirty and threatening. Do they take a risk with the traffic or a risk with the underpass? Thankfully, not everything that is good for pedestrians has to be expensive or high-tech. There are many civil works that can easily be implemented to help pedestrians, including pedestrian refuges and curb ramps. Pedestrian refuges are raised islands in the middle of a road, where pedestrians can safely wait for a gap in the traffic to finish crossing the road. Pedestrian refuges are great because they reduce pedestrian crashes by 50% and pedestrian delays by up to 90%. And they are low cost and they need little maintenance. Curb ramps give smooth access between the footpath and the road for people in wheelchairs, with strollers or with handcarts. They focus pedestrians to a single point and they eliminate the need to step over high curb stones. The major threat to pedestrians is high speed. Under the SAFE system, 30 km per hour is the maximum SAFE speed where pedestrians and motor vehicles interact. How can this be achieved? By good enforcement, yes. Police have a very important role in managing speeds. But we also need to change the road environment. Traffic calming is the term for using road humps, chicanes, roundabouts and other devices to slow traffic. The benefits of traffic calming include lower traffic speeds, drivers have more time to react to unexpected events, leading to fewer and less severe collisions. There is also less unnecessary through traffic and this leads to improved environments. One very important issue across Carrick is the need to slow down highway traffic as it passes through rural villages. This can be achieved by perceptual line markings on the approach to the village, gateways as drivers enter the village, and traffic calming devices through the village. Calming the main roads through Carrick villages should be a high priority for all engineers. The Carrick Workshop encourages broad discussion of this vital topic. This short film has introduced the Carrick Pedestrian Safety Manual and outlined some of its advice about providing safer pedestrian facilities. The Carrick Manual encourages engineers to do more for our largest group of customers, more mid-block signals with push buttons to help pedestrians to create a gap in traffic when they need it. The introduction of puffin crossings. More pedestrian refuges, curb ramps and curb extensions. They are low cost, long lasting and effective. Traffic calming of main roads through villages and on local streets in cities. 
Please go to either the ADB or Carrick websites on the right hand side of your screen for updates on workshops and to download the Carrick ADB Pedestrian Safety Manual. It's free and it's available in four languages, English, Russian, Chinese, Mongolian. And I hope to see you in a Carrick Road Safety Engineering Workshop online or in person. It will be time well spent and it might guide you to a career in which you can save lives on the roads of your country. I look forward to meeting you there soon. Carrack is working towards safer roads for all.